All right, guys, we're going to kick this thing off. Today's chat on uh, athlete mindset on gratitude. So start off with a prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you tonight and we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for technology that uh, allows us to be able to share your word, your thoughts, um, your message. I pray tonight, Father, that you use me, Lord, as a, as a vessel to communicate whatever it is that you want to communicate, Lord, to the hearts of those who are, who are listening and watching tonight. Um, I pray, Lord, that you impact each and every one of our lives and meet us wherever we are in our faith and our walk and our journey with you. We're so grateful um, for, again, for this opportunity to share and to speak about you, Lord, and to grow closer to you. We thank you for Faith Rx uh, in giving us this platform. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every person's life that is here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So it is uh, Thanksgiving time um, coming up in, in less than a week, which is kind of crazy because it kind of, um, at least for me, it always feels like it creeps up on us. We have um, Halloween and then next thing you know, it's, it's Christmas. But anyhow, so it is fitting to talk about gratitude. So we'll talk a little bit about gratitude. And if I get an aim, if you, if you like whatever it is that the Lord is speaking through me, you can go ahead and uh, give me a little amen because at times I feel like I'm here just talking to myself. But if you're, if you're out there, um, let me show some love. Give a little amen just like uh, Marinelle just did. So thank you for that. So guys, we're going to make this um, you know pretty brief, but hopefully it's impactful. We're going to talk about 10 minutes about gratitude. And the message is actually, um, what I titled it is Grace from Grace to Glory. And we don't talk about grace or glory to the end. So um, right in the middle, in between grace and glory is gratitude. And we'll talk about that and throughout. So first, I always like to, whenever talking about a topic, is I like to kind of break down the word and uh, look up the word for its purest definition because sometimes I realize that whatever my definition, whatever my personal definition is for the word may not be the pure definition and maybe um, what it was intended to mean. Um, and sometimes it also shines a little more light on what the actual word should mean uh, or maybe it has a different meaning after I look up uh, the meaning of dictionary. Um, and sometimes it's more than just the meaning of the dictionary, but also what other people have to say about this. So before I say what gratitude is, I'd like to say what gratitude is not. Because when you think about what gratitude is not, uh, it will clearly help you identify how important gratitude should be in your life. Because the opposite of gratitude is, uh, is not very uh, sexy or pleasant or, or just anything that's beautiful. Um, so the opposite of gratitude is would be not feeling appreciative after being the beneficiary of an altruistic act. So imagine you, uh, you gave and you gifted someone something uh, that they did not earn and uh, they were not grateful or appreciative of, of, of an act um, and the gift in which you gave them, whether maybe you helped them out on the side of the road, they had a busted tire and they just acted like they didn't care afterwards, you probably would feel pretty hurt by that. Um, so that, that person's actions uh, or lack of action, so to speak, or lack of attitude would uh, would be the opposite of, of gratitude. <coughs> Let's talk about what gratitude actually looks like in its purest definition, right? And how that's important in our relationship with God and, and as athletes and competitors. Um, so as a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible, with gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives. As a result, gratitude helps people connect to something larger than themselves as individuals, whether to other people, nature, or to a higher power. Again, these are definitions pulled um, from internet and, and whatnot. Um, the appreciation of what is valuable and meaningful to oneself represent a general state of thankfulness. All right, I'll give uh, one more definition, a deeper appreciation for someone which produces longer lasting positivity. So um, if we were to define gratitude in one word, right, what is it? Is it an emotion? Is it a feeling? Um, is it an idea? Is it a mindset? Is it a virtue? Um, is it a state of being? Um, I think it's all of the above, but one way that I would actually um, define it is that it's a choice. So think about gratitude as a choice. Like you literally have the choice to be 
to practice gratitude, to be grateful. Um, so again, what, what, what that looks like uh, could be through the form of, of a thought, of an idea, of an emotion, uh, of a mindset, a virtue, or state of being. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's, it's, it's a choice. So right now, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the choice to be grateful that although my daughter is interrupting me, I'm grateful that she's here and that she's alive and that I have a daughter to be grateful for. So I'm going to take a second. Yes, love. Yeah, so I need you to go ask mommy to do this, okay? Tell mommy that daddy is working, okay? Mommy already knows. Okay, well, tell mommy to help you. Go, I already did. Bye. Love you. All right, so it's an attitude, it's a mindset, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling, it's a, all of the above, but at the end of the day, it's a choice, right? Sometimes we just feel it naturally, but at times maybe we get stuck in a rut and we're not exactly sure how to activate that and what that looks like in action. Um, so we talked a little bit about what gratitude is. Um, next, I want to talk about you know why. Why gratitude? Why is it important to be grateful? Why can't I just kind of go around and being the opposite of of, of grateful? Um, I mean, I think you know the easy uh, thing to to kind of focus on is man, if I'm not grateful or if I don't show gratitude to others, uh, so to speak, that people won't really like me all that much, and I kind of want to be a liked person. Um, so that's that's number one, but. Um, more so maybe to, to God, right? Like, how can I be grateful to God? So obviously showing gratitude to others is important because you want them to know that that, that what they did uh, is, is important to you. But um, number one, I believe it, it pleases and it honors God. You know, a lot of times you'll see, and I think it's cool, right? You, you go on Instagram and you read hashtags like, you know, honor your gifts. Um, how do you honor something that's not like tangible like that, right? But rather, I like to think honor the giver of the gift. And we'll dive a little deeper into gifts and whatnot. But um, yeah, it definitely pleases him and it honors him. Uh, I would say it obviously produces an emotional well-being, right? So if you like focus on uh, gratitude, there is emotional chemical things that happen in your brain that actually make you feel better. And most of us want to feel good. So that's something that we can do. Um, it lifts up others around you, right? I mean, you, you, we all know of the, the negative Nancy and the people who are kind of always you know, just complaining and uh, choose to see the glass, glass half empty or, you know, can easily get distracted by the adversity that comes in life. But if we choose to focus on, you know, the blessings that we have and, and uh, embrace an attitude of gratitude, and that can kind of change the environment in which we're around, whether it be at work, in our family, in our relationships, at the gym, um, in, in all walks of life. Um, I believe it also forges a connection with God, right? So if you look at the parent-child relationship, how can um, a, a child actually connect with, with, the, with the father, with, with their mother, um, if all they're ever doing is asking, asking, help me this, help me with that, uh, please give me this, please give me that, but never comes and says thank you, never says I'm so grateful, um, or maybe it doesn't even say it with words, but just shows in, in, in a variety of ways that they actually appreciate the sacrifices that we make. Um, what does that parent feel like? So I believe when that parent, when that child does that for the parent uh, and vice versa, um, there is a sense of connection. There's a, there's a stronger bond there because they, they want another, respect one another and appreciate one another and understand that there's a lot of sacrifices that go into um, giving. Um, of oneself or of just you know physical things as well tangible things excuse me um, I believe it leads to purpose um, being grateful can lead you to your purpose and we'll talk about that these are just bullet points here and uh, this was a quote that I read that um, was something that would lead me to my next topic and it says it was uh, Lacewing uh, said this and it says if we acquire a good through exchange efforts or achievement then we typically don't feel gratitude. So what does that look like? You know, I worked really hard for this. I deserve it. There's that sense of entitlement. Gratitude doesn't exist there. If uh, I work, if 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 I achieve something because, you know, it's something that you know you've strived for and you set a goal out to do, and for whatever reason or another, you know, you you achieved it. Um, or if there's an exchange, like I paid for this and I got it back, and you know. I, I bought a meal or I bought a car and maybe you're like, hey, why should I be grateful for my car? I paid for it. There's no reason for me to be grateful. Um, that There's no real feeling of, of gratefulness, of gratitude there. Oh, you look beautiful with that star dress. You want to show everybody? 
No? You're good? Okay, we'll talk in a little bit, okay? Five minutes. Five, no, five, listen, five minutes. Okay, time out. Virginia, I need you to take the daughter, please. Thank you. Okay, so we were talking about, uh, again, if we acquire a good through exchange, through effort, or through achievement, we typically don't feel gratitude. However, when does gratitude become real? When does it become an emotion? And gratitude is an emotion we feel in response to receiving something, something good, which is undeserved. I could just drop the mic and just walk out right now, um, but I'll elaborate a little bit more, right? So real gratitude, right? Because it's, it's one thing to be thankful. Like, hey, thank you for making that meal for me. I mean, I worked really hard. I actually paid for the food, but you made it. You didn't have to, right? So there's, there's that. That's thankfulness. But, but true gratitude exists when it's undeserved. And if you look at your relationship with God from those lenses as to like this life I live, this the legs that I have, the child that I have, the just everything. We, we can start naming them off and we'll be here all night. But I didn't deserve any of it. I, the, the simple fact that I, ha, I have salvation and that I have an, uh, the, the potential to, to live a life of abundance and to live eternally in heaven with him, that's grace. I don't deserve it. I'm, I'm super flawed and sinful. And um, that gratitude is the be that grace that he extends to us is the beginning of gratitude. We can't have gratitude without grace. So the, the next topic is, but first grace, right? So first we have to recognize, right? So I think a lot of times we have this sense of entitlement and like, hey, I earned this, I proved myself, so on and so forth. How, how can we actually enter into the state of gratitude if we're not realizing that the things that we have, the life that we live was not earned it was given to us by grace our salvation is not something that we can work for but it was given to us by grace by god's grace so from grace to glory the next step is gratitude we're extremely grateful for the grace that god has given us so how do we get to the next step what does god give us what is it that we're so grateful for um, and hence, you know, the letters that I'm going to be using are all start with G's. So if you're writing something down, just write all the G's, right? Guido's going to be, uh, talking about all the G's. So we're grateful for the gifts that he's given us. Um, and think about gifts as in a physical, tangible way as something that, Hey, I didn't earn this. It's a gift, right? Like it's my birthday. Did you do anything to be born? No. So people give you a gift on your birthday. It's something that you didn't deserve. You just happened to turn 22, right? That's how old I am. I'm going to turn 22 um, and people are going to gift me something. I didn't, I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. I'm grateful for it. So from grace to being grateful for the gifts will lead you your way of showing. How do we show God that we are grateful? There's one word I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to use it with a G and it's going to be called grind. Right, it's it's a really cool uh, word that we all like to hashtag and we like to post and look at me on my grind, um, working from Starbucks or whatever it is that we're doing. But truly, where we can show God with our actions, not so much with our words. It's one thing to say, "God, I'm grateful," and another thing to show Him that you're grateful is to acknowledge that He's the giver of your gifts that are undeserved, and that you're going to grind. You're going to work so hard on those gifts. And when you work hard on those gifts, the next step is, starts with a G, is you're gonna grow. And you're gonna grow into the purpose in which God has set for you. He has, a, he has a will, he has a plan for our lives, but it starts with grace. And we go from grace to being grateful for the gifts that he's given us. And then we're gonna start grinding. And as we grind, we start growing. And the more we grow, then we can achieve greatness. And what does greatness look like? Well, greatness doesn't look like what the world says greatness looks like in the form of, you know, nice homes and, you know, a lot of Instagram followers and a lot of money in the bank account. I mean, those are worldly standards of greatness and there's value there for sure. But greatness, um, from the words of T.D. Jakes, is, is in character and who you are as a person, right? And the impact in which you have on this world and in the lives that are close to you and lastly and in love and how deep you love and how much you love. So think about that is the greatness that you want to achieve, that God wants you to achieve in life is in character, 
in impact and in love. And once we achieve that greatness, all of that ends up in glory, in glorifying God. So from God's grace to glorifying him. Starts with grace, gratitude is somewhere there in the middle. Okay, we're gonna utilize the gratitude to grow. We're gonna then, excuse me, we're gonna utilize that, that gratitude to grind and work. And as we work, it's just natural, the same way you show up in the gym and you're working, right? You get bigger, you, you, you start uh, growing from the grind and uh, you start achieving greatness, start moving up in the, in the uh, rankings, so to speak, right? We're using worldly um, situations and then eventually um, he receives the glory. So uh, hopefully you, you uh, were able to take something from that. And if I would finish it off with, with two points would be, you know, a lot of us are here and, you know, maybe you're gonna be competing at Waterpalooza, maybe you are competing in, uh, at the Open, or maybe you just, hey, you just wanna improve your performance. I truly believe that having a grateful attitude will help improve your performance. How so? From a competitor standpoint. Um, it helps you fear less. So I, I have practiced this for, for, for quite some time. I even remember um, becoming extremely emotional before workouts and to the point where it's broken me down into tears because I was just like literally that zoned in on not the workout, not the movement, but the simple fact that how is it that I can actually perform this? It, it was, I really truly believe that it's a gift that was given to me. I worked the gift, I grinded the gift, and it led me to grow and be better at CrossFit or whatever it is that I'm doing, and eventually became great at it, and now I wanna use it for his glory. But it, it made me fear less, and we have that on a shirt, and it's true, it just, instead of focusing on this workout's gonna be horrible, or maybe I'm not that good at these movements, I started thinking, hey, I'm pretty grateful that I can actually do these movements, and I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to be on the stage to utilize these talents for his glory and just really start focusing on being grateful. I mean, I, I could be somewhere else doing something else that's not as um, cool, awesome, and, and valuable as this. So it helps me fear less and, and actually puts things into perspective. Like it's just a workout. Like really, what am I, what am I afraid of, right? So I'm speaking obviously from a, um, an athlete slash competitor perspective. It helps me focus on, so as an athlete, we go into like ebbs and flows in different states of mind. Like I want to be confident or I want to be tough or you, you can do this. And we have all these mantras and really we, we can only really be in one state of mind at a time. Um, and there's one that I have believed that triumphs all. Like you cannot have fear and you cannot have um, timidity. You cannot have a lack of confidence if you have gratitude. Grat gratitude just overwhelms them all. And just think about that and what that feels like, right? Feeling scared, but all of a sudden feeling grateful or being upset at someone or something and then all of a sudden being grateful. Like you can't, you, they can't coexist. They can't both be there at the same time. So if we focus on the gratitude, we will go through less of these ups and downs in between our workouts. So maybe we had a bad workout, one that we thought we were actually gonna do pretty well on, and, um, but if we're grateful, the fact that, hey, guess what? I have another opportunity to, to, uh, to glorify God and to do great and to utilize these gifts for his glory. Um, lastly, in, in regards to competition, it helps me maintain positive um, because it reminds me of what my true purpose is, right? So if my purpose in this competition, my number one purpose in this competition is to be on the podium, then I've missed it. I still have some growing to do, and, and, I, and I lived that way for many years. I was a Christian whose main purpose was to just win by the definition that is displayed on a leaderboard and on a scoreboard, playing football all my life. I, all the Bible verses, I used them. God strengthened me, helped me, Philippians 4.13, all of them. But really, like this, this didn't all really seem to make sense until I started realizing what my true purpose was. And what my true purpose was that regardless of the outcome was that my definition of winning had to change. My definition of winning, because at the end of the day, there's thousands of CrossFitters around the world. So everybody else would be considered a loser outside of, you know, Matt Fraser and 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 uh, and the female winner sips my mind right now. But everyone else would be a loser, right? No, that, that this doesn't make sense. So how do you can, how do you define winning? And for me right now, I believe winning means how hard I grind those gifts that he's given me, how hard I work on those gifts. 
So if I enter into a competition and I define my success by my rank and how I finished, then I'll, I'll, I'd be a loser 99% of the times. But if I look at my success and I deem it off of how did I, did I please God? And it's, it's clearly displayed in Colossians 3.23. I got to throw a little Bible in here, right? Uh, is whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if working for the Lord and not for men. And when it says men, mankind, human servants, whatever it is, you can, it, 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 it's, we live a life of self-service. So when it says, or we try not to obviously, but we, we do as if working hard for the Lord and not for men. So if you're going to compete, do, how, like, do you really think that it matters so much to God, whether you came in first or second? Probably not. It probably means more to him that you did it for him and that you worked as hard as you possibly could. Um, I can go on for days about this. I really, it was supposed to be only 10 minutes. So I went a little over, but, um, I really just hope that, that, that this message has impacted you the way that it has for me. Uh, it's changed the way that I compete. It's changed everything for me. I really, really, truly want to honor God. And what does that look like? And it's been so hard for me to like define that. Like, how do I give something back to someone that I can't like see or touch? And it's, it's with my efforts. It's with my heart. Work at it, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart. So it's, it's basically telling you in, in your effort, but your effort should be steered and directed towards him, not towards you or others. So here we go, guys. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for this opportunity, again, to leverage technology and to share. Um, we pray, Lord, that the seeds that you planted in us tonight, that they grow, Father God, that we can... Um, in light, Father God, of, of who you are and what your purpose was uh, when you came down and sent your son to die on the cross for us, was that everything that he did for us uh, was undeserved and that we view it all in grace and that we be grateful for that grace. And Father God, that we be able to show him how grateful, show you how grateful we are, Father God, through our works, Lord, through through our actions, Lord, that, that we work, that we grind for you, not for me, not for others, but for you. And that through those works, Father God, that we grow, that we grow closer to you, that we grow closer to the purpose for which you have created us for. And that that growth lead us to greatness because you created us to be great, Father God. You created us in your image and in your likeness. So you definitely didn't create us to be just, just good. And that that greatness, Father God, shine down onto the lives of others and ultimately glorify you. That's what we want to live for, for you, to glorify you in all that we do. We thank you, Lord, in this time of year that we not have just a, a season of gratitude, but live a life of gratitude in mind and heart and in spirit. We thank you. May you bless every life that is, that is here watching and listening, Lord, and, the, and their families, Lord, they have safe travels throughout the holidays, and that you may bless them, Lord, and they, that they may be a light in the darkness wherever they go. We love you. We thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Love you all. And uh, have a beautiful, blessed night. Take care.